Hoffman, art public artist here in Charlottesville. And today, I'm going into Cafe Cubana to be able to hopefully sell my artwork. Well, I'm going to ask Tony to please allow me to put it up on the wall. Now, I understand there's going to be quite a bit of challenge because lots of artists need to do that. They need to express themselves and be able to make a living, so they put their art all over the restaurants here and hope that the customers will look at them, enjoy them, and also get to know who the artists are in Charlottesville, but also hopefully purchase them for their own homes because they're unique, one of a kind. Uh, unlike your TV sets or anything else that you buy, you can't uh, own uh, artwork uh, just for 10 minutes. It would be a lifetime and for many generations to come. So hopefully, uh, I'm going to go in there right now. I'm going to ask Tony if it's okay if I can get up on the walls also some of my artwork. But in the meantime, I think I'm going to go and do a caricature event which means I'm going to do a drawing of the customers in the restaurant because it's an institution, Café Cubano. Cuba is a tropical paradise, but it's a paradise full of surprises. Beyond the city lives a wild, mysterious island teeming with uniquely Cuban animals. Each bizarre creature is a story of triumph against staggering odds. How did they get here and how have they survived? It's a story that stretches back in time, beyond the period of human settlement. It's a tale of titanic forces, ocean currents, wild storms, and an amazing island arc. Hey Tony! It's alright if I do a caricature over there? Go right ahead, do what you please. Hey, there's Andy Faith.
And that's what you do when you want to do a caricaturism. Cuba has a long history. From 1492, when Columbus landed, through the Spanish colonial period that created so much of old Havana, to modern times of revolution, communism, and the rule of Fidel Castro. Millions of tourists are drawn to Cuba each year by the attractions of music, cigars, and tobacco. But beyond the fields, the cities, and the beaches lies a wild Cuba, a little-known world with a much longer but equally colorful and fascinating history. We can see part of that history alive and well in the tropical seas that surround Cuba. The coral reefs teem with fish. They can claim to be the best in the Caribbean, for since the revolution in 1959, these seas have had little fishing pressure. The seas around Cuba are spectacular, but the sharks and the coral fishes are not exclusively Cuban. They can be found elsewhere in the Caribbean. If you want to see uniquely Cuban wildlife, you need to look back to the land. And to understand the nature of Cuba, you must go back in time. Cuba's wild history stretches back millions of years. During the last ice age, much of the world's water was locked up as ice, and so the sea level was lower. Cuba was a bigger and broader island. What are shallow seas today were then lush freshwater swamps. These swamps covered much of Cuba, the Bahamas and the Cayman Islands, and must have been home to millions of mosquitoes and to a variety of other creatures, including this, the Cuban hutia. These large rodents can still be found today, along with the mosquitoes. They tend to stick to the pockets of high ground, avoiding the water. And for good reason. There's another creature that lives in the swamp. The Cuban crocodile. This crocodile can grow to nearly 13 feet and weigh almost 300 pounds. It has the reputation of being the most aggressive crocodile in the world. The leaping crocodiles evolved on Cuba in the swamps that covered vast areas during the Ice Age. But the swamps were not always that large. As the sea level changed, some wetlands would be transformed into forests. Today, the dry forest is the home of many of the birds of Cuba, like the Cuban parrot. Birds must have flown to Cuba over a period of millions of years. The more recent colonists, like the turkey vulture, have remained the same as birds on the American continents. Other more ancient arrivals evolved into Caribbean birds found on several of the islands. But some birds are wholly Cuban, found nowhere else on Earth. Their ancestors, typically woodland birds, were ideal pioneers. They were strong flyers, able to reach the island. But once there, they stayed put in the forest. In time, these birds changed into uniquely Cuban creatures, like the national bird, the Cuban trogon.
The story of wild Cuba runs for a hundred million years. In that time, as the island moved from the Pacific to the Caribbean, many creatures have arrived on its shores. Today, their descendants live alongside more familiar Cuban icons. But it is these unique creatures that make Cuba the wild island of the Caribbean. Them the opportunity to display their, uh, their passion, if you will. Oh, and right. it's a uh, benefit for me to have new artwork every month on the wall as well. Oh, let, let me ask you something. Sure. How did this begin? How did you start doing this with the artwork here? Well, I purchased the business uh, going on seven plus years ago uh, from the Brothers of Higher Grounds and uh, pretty much get the same concept because I think they had a great, great, great nation. Back then they were featuring local artists as well. And I just from that point on took it and then, if you will, just got involved with nothing but the local artists and I put it out there in the media and to word of mouthing. And it's gotten to the point now that I will book up a whole year within three to four months in the beginning of each calendar year. So it's phenomenal and I got a great waiting list and I've gotten good response. It becomes a conversation piece around the round tables in the morning over coffee. And it's just very interesting to see the different type of artwork every month from being photography, being oil, being water. It's just, it's just fascinating, fascinating, very talented. You know, and what I love about your run, can we walk over here sure, a little bit? Sure, sure. Let's go right over here. What you have here is the most incredible coffee ever. I really think there is. Sarah. What is this? Uh, our coffee is, uh, is from the Traeger Brothers Coffee and it's 100% certified organic. Our special blend, and we call it a blend. 90, which is a dark roast, and a blend 50, which is a full body medium, is a blend from Indonesia, Ethiopia, Central and South America. The beans are 100% certified organic coffee, Why is roasted it locally here in London. 100%? Is that important? It's very important. I mean, you can call it uh, uh, organic and it'll be a 25% mix, if you will. But if you want 100% per certified, you need to have a certificate on the website with Trigger Brother Coffee Do. And in my opinion, you can truly taste the difference. You know, I let do. Me, allow me I to do. show you. Let yeah, me to show you. Sure, let's right. go. There is something to be said about the natural oil that's released on it. It's a very, very dark roast, but it's not bitter at all. And this is the espresso. And I, in my opinion, I've been drinking coffee and sound for a number of years. It really is one of the finest uh, roasts that I've come across, especially the fact that it's very local. And like the artist, I'm trying to keep it as local as possible. Oh my God, you're a fabulous guy. Thank, Thank you so you. much. This is what I call the public wall. Oh. An individual from the community came down here and post a band where it would be theater, where it be art, where it be uh, a show, or any current event that be going out. This is what I call the community wall. People come right here, they post it up on the wall, and we try to keep it as turning and abreast as current as possible. Awesome. And Thank you, you know, this part of the restaurant is so awesome also. Who are these? Oh, 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 oh. 
photographer for Billy Hunt. Oh, we know Billy Hunt. Yeah, yes, and he's the photographer oh, for so. June. And it was very yeah. much involved in the uh, festival right, right. photography right now. So he asked if we could have not only the room up front, but the room in the back. Traditionally, I have uh, tropical pictures back here of Cuba. Uh, recent pictures from Cuba, if you will, but because of the popularity of the show, you actually could have this room. And I said absolutely. It's now, gotten a lot of comments. I must say, I'm so involved with the uh, culture of Cuba. Yes. I think that the uh, country and the food and the people and the music is dynamic. It's it's amazing. Thank you. And if it wasn't for the Cuban people, pr trust me, yeah. I wouldn't have inspiration half the time. Really? Yes, sir. Oh, and it's that you know their uh, grassroots. They yeah. come from, they're the beginnings of jazz. Yeah, yeah. This yeah, is yeah, what the started Caribbean, jazz. If you will, absolutely. Yes, absolutely. it's an absolutely. integral part of very, our very music and so. our culture very, very as well. That Caribbean beat, if you will. Yes, absolutely. and so, and um, I just, you know, what I love about this is that when we were in the restaurant, we hear the Cuban music, yeah. and you can feel, now yeah. you also make some Cuban type sandwiches. I do. I have uh, my own mojo recipe, which is really just green um, uh, oranges, if you will, and limes and uh, a dab of lemon and uh, garlic and uh, 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 salt and pepper to taste and, and then I wrap it all in a sage leaf if you want let it marinate. So the pork that I use instead of being a pork shoulder I use the loin. Mm. It reduces the fat if you mm. will on it and then I just break up that loin almost like a pork mm. pull and put it with the black forest hams and some Swiss cheese and mm. pickle and then I get my Cuban bread shipped up from Miami to oh my, my distributor. Goodness. So we press it on a panini and we put it out there with salsa fresca and it's, the community seems to like it. I have a loyal clientele that comes consistently for the Cuban sandwiches. And then we put on like the de pollo and ropa vieja and black bean soup, a rojo frijol y negro and the whole nine yard. But I keep it mostly to a salad and panini concept at the lunch, a breakfast concept in the morning and we introduce half a dozen or so um, uh, Cuban fairs or Latin fairs if you will. You should try our, our, our what I personally like them. The best is uh, my tamales, and my tamales. Okay, let's that I go. Use. It's, it's on a banana. It's, it's on a kidding, banana leaf. <laughs> I think it's Oh my cool. goodness! Tell me. So this is wonderful because we have you here in Charlottesville. We don't have enough culture in Charlottesville. We can't have enough culture in Charlottesville, and so I am so wonderfully grateful for you for pursuing Oh, thank pursuing you. And likewise, I think Charlottesville is very dynamic. I think right. it's truly a, a cultural mix. It, it, it's extremely well educated and diversity of cultures and education as well. And that whole mix and done to own is what adds to a law. And I think that's probably, I mean, just this is my bias, why you have you know, fondness for the art here. Very much so. Because it speaks to yeah. the people. Yes. It yes. gives us all sort of a basis for why we're alive, you yes, know. So. Exactly. I mean, like yes, Billy so. Hunt is, a, this is a claw. Which is the ladies' armrest? Yeah, Trust exactly. The Charlottesville ladies' armrest. Arm I understand. Now took the program national. Well, yeah, here's yeah. and the proceeds go to work. Here's why the cause I'm as well. here today is for the free clinic, Absolutely. which you have donated to. And Absolutely. I have Absolutely. To thank you so no, much no, no, for your no, generosity. No, no. Thank you. Thank um, you. We are so happy that you are. Um, being able to un uh, understand that the free clinic is here for people who are employed, mm -hmm. and that they are going to get some kind of co you know preventative medicine from volunteers who exactly. go there, the doctors, the nurses, the lab the techs, exactly. pharmacies, exactly. Exactly. even exactly. the eye people, and exactly. the dental. Exactly. So oh, you keep the employers. The employers can benefit the employees and keep them healthy. Exactly. Then everybody's. Thriving, hopefully. Exactly. Yeah. Exactly. So you are so nice to do this. On the contrary, it's my pleasure. And so we are here today also because um, I do caricature events. Mm -hmm. And so what I do is I try to incorporate all of Charlottesville by doing a drawing. Right. And I owe you a caricature. Oh, uh, you're thank so you. busy today we couldn't thank do you. one. Okay. But uh, next time you're at the farmers market Absolutely. or anywhere else on Absolutely. The, Absolutely. at downtown well sometimes yeah. I'm also at the kiosk. Okay. Okay. I mean, well, not the kiosk, but the the uh, car center yes. and the key center. Okay. And also Penn Park now. Wow. So how so, you keep busy to say Yes, sir. So okay. hopefully we can hook up yep. and we can do a caricature event together. Consider it done. It'll be my pleasure. So I think that's about a wrap. Okay. And, Great. Um, and we're going to be um, uh, uh, calling this wrap.
<laughs> hopefully we'll see you in a few more months maybe. Okay. And maybe we can catch up and see how you what you're doing next. Excellent. Okay. I look forward to Thanks so much. I'll talk to you. Yeah. <laughs>